exchanges will be in better stead to capitalize on new income opportunities, free from any limitations arising from com conflicting member interests. To this end, it is worth noting that academic research on the effect of demutualization on the financial performance of 20 demutualized exchanges between 1996 and 2008 suggests that the return on equity increases by an average 5% to 20%, with the average net profit margin increasing by 14% to 30%. This is according to Rand Merchant Bank. Demutualization has also contributed positively to stock market performance. On the back of strong macroeconomic performance, improved regulation, and other factors, the JSE All Share Index has grown by 280% since its demutualization in 2005 to reach 53,817.31 basis points as at the end of April 2017. Similarly, the Nairobi All Share Index gained 16% since its demutualization process, reaching an all-time high of 176 points in February 2015 prior to the commodity bubble and global flight to safety following the US Fed's increase in its benchmark lending rate. While African exchanges might have limitations in raising the funds required to effectively compete in a dynamic business landscape as member-owned stock exchanges, as demutualized exchanges, they can tap into the capital markets as a publicly owned stock exchange. Capital raised by African exchanges in an IPO or a private placement like any other business can be used to upgrade systems and attract high caliber human resources, thereby enhancing its ability to compete domestically and internationally. Following demutualization, a number of our peers have repositioned their markets building alliances or consolidating within and across borders in order to enhance their attractiveness. For example, in 2006, the Australian Stock Exchange merged with the Sydney Futures Exchange to form the Australian Securities Exchange, the ASX. The following year, the New York Stock Exchange merged with Euronext to form NYSE Euronext, creating the world's largest stock exchange with revenues in excess of $4.5 billion. More, pe more peculiar to emerging markets, demutualization could serve as a means of collaborating with strategic shareholders with specialized know-how aimed at importing international skills, knowledge, and technical efficiencies into our domestic markets. Additionally, it will enable African exchanges to be more agile and responsive to the intensifying global competition for capital market order flow and presents them with the opportunity to expand into, into new markets. I will speak briefly about the progress we have made at the Nigerian Stock Exchange on our demutualization efforts. A study tours are vehicles for increasing our knowledge base, learning global best practices and processes, as well as establishing mutually beneficial relationships. Last year, in preparation for the launch of our deriv derivatives market, the National Council and the Nigerian Stock Exchange Management participated in a technical tour of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the world's leading and most diverse derivatives ex marketplace, and the Chicago Board Options Exchange, the largest US options exchange. At the CME Group, the CEO at the time, Mr. Pufinda Gill, highlighted the crucial role of demutualization in enabling the CME increase direct access to its trading systems and develop high caliber staff. He opined that had the CME not demutualized, three of its subsidiary exchanges would not be in existence today. Accordingly, he urged us to remain steadfast in our demutualization drive. The same message was conveyed to us at CBOE, which recently joined ranks with other great blue chip blue chip companies listed in the S&P 500 after the acquisition of BATS Global Markets, highlighting its strong growth since going public in 2010. To strategically position the Nigerian capital market for the next phase of growth, I and my colleagues on the National Council, along with management, made the strategic decision 
to demutualize the Nigerian Stock Exchange in our overall ambition to reform the Nigerian capital market into a world-class market. Following this, we employed an extensive RFP process in the appointment of legal and financial advisors for the demutualization project in 2015. Recognizing the importance of demutualization to the vitality of our business model, the National Council held a strategy session in the first half of 2016 solely to discuss the stock exchange roadmap to manage issues that could affect the process, including potential regulatory and political concerns. Subsequently, a meeting between the National Council and past presidents of the exchange was held with six past presidents in attendance to discuss solutions and insights on a clear path forward. The value gained with this engagement has dramatically enhanced the likelihood of a successful and seamless demutualization process. Today we have submitted a, a draft demutualization bill to the National Assembly, which is the legislature of Nigeria, which will allow for our legal status as a demutualized entity. We have also completed five key reports in support of the project, including inception, legal due diligence, tax due diligence, member register review, as, and assessment of business and operational plan reports. In March 2017, we successfully conducted an extraordinary general meeting to formally empower the demutualization project team to fast-track completion of the project. With the expectation of the successful passage of the bill into law, the National Council management team and I will continue to devote our efforts towards completing all necessary documentation stipulated in the Securities and Exchange Rules and effecting the requisite changes in our enabling constitution. Ultimately, we look forward to re-registering the exchange and assigning shares to members based on an agreed apportionment. I will now discuss a little bit, given my legal background, on the corporate restructuring considerations that you may wish to consider. I believe the corporate restructuring is of the utmost importance and should not be taken lightly as we collectively embark on this journey to create a more dynamic financial market across Africa. Exchanges may opt for a number of corporate structures upon demutualization. It may adopt a for-profit private company structure where only members or members out and outside investors are the owners. Alternatively, the exchange can be listed on a recognized exchange, most times on itself with or without restrictions on the number of shares that can be owned by exchange members and non-members. For most demutualized exchanges, a private structure is usually the first step before publicly listing, an example being the JSC, which demutualized in 2005 and listed on its own exchange in 2006. Notwithstanding the overarching corporate structure adopted by the exchange, demutualization brings new conflicts of interest arising from the objective to maximize profits and the self-regulatory function of the exchange. For-profit exchanges can establish a separate entity to conduct regulatory functions, thereby avoiding conflict of interest issues. This can take one of two forms, the independent subsidiary model establishing a subsidiary with an independent governing board and management separate from the exchange holding company or the supervised subsidiary model where the subsidiary's governing board is the regulatory oversight committee of the exchange holding company. Alternatively, exchanges can adopt the supervised division model whereby the regulatory function remains with the exchange and reports to the exchange holding company CEO and ROC. The choice of regulatory model the exchange adopts will depend on several factors. Are there mechanisms to ensure adequate resources to meet the regulatory mission? What is the relationship between the regulatory subsidiary CEO and holding company CEO? If not independent, what is the relationship between the regulatory divisional head and holding company CEO? Further considerations would relate to who will be responsible for rulemaking, rules interpretation, and resolution 
of disciplinary matters post demutualization. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, illiquidity and higher costs of capital characteristic of underdeveloped markets are known to deter foreign investors and steer capital raising efforts of large domestic companies to foreign markets. By listing on a stock exchange, demutualization provides an opportunity to unlock the value of African stock exchanges, providing an exit mechanism for former members and a unique opportunity for the public to partake in the profits of the exchange, thereby creating wealth for the general populace. Perhaps the most important outcome of demutualization for African exchanges in the long term would be addressing the liquidity challenges faced by African capital markets. Demutualization appears to be the logical next step for African exchanges, especially if we are to remain relevant in our role of powering Africa's economic growth and development. However, it is noteworthy that African stock exchanges must proceed cautiously as certain key preconditions, such as a critical mass of stock exchange trading and related services, as well as a sufficiently liberalized market are necessary to drive a financially viable operation post demutualization Other preconditions include the existence of the rule of law, a high financial literacy rate, and sound corporate governance practices, absence of which would undermine any demutualized regime. Therefore, African stock exchanges that do not currently meet these preconditions may wish to consider demutualization as a long-term objective. In the interim, these African stock exchanges should pri prioritize financial deepening, promoting professionalism and expertise, and enhancing macroeconomic stability necessary for building critical mass of listings and trading activity. Implementing a demutualization program can be a very complex undertaking, as I'm sure our counterparts who have already successfully transited will attest. The process represents a wholesale cultural transformation of the business, as well as a changing every dimension of the exchange. The fact that majority of the world's leading exchanges have embraced demutualization is indicative of the significant benefits that accrue to the entities that have undergone the process. However, a proper understanding of all the issues, openness to new approaches, and a high level of cooperation amongst and exchanges stakeholders are fundamental to any successful demutualization. With that said, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank you most warmly for your attention to a topic which I hope will embolden those exchanges that are yet to be demutualized. Je vous souhaite de fructueux débats. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much to Mr. Ogubanjo for giving us such a detailed de description of some of, and also not sort of gilding the lily too much, but explaining some of the complexities, some of the roots, and also preconditions. I was happy to be involved in the demutualization strategy for Dar es Salaam Stock Exchange, and also the excitement when it did an IPO and the share price doubled in the first day of trading, because so many people were excited about the prospects of a stock exchange under dynamic management moving into the new structure and playing a very dynamic role in the economy. And it was very interesting, you know, bringing stockbrokers more closely into the exchange almost th through the change of demutualization gave a lot of energy. But now, don't worry about the time. We've got some interesting ways to catch up time later in the day, but we're pushing on into our next session, which is one of the key headaches that most stock exchanges probably around the world and particularly in Africa think about, and that's liquidity. And it's not the sort of liquidity that happens in the evening in the bar, but it's actually trading volume. And we've got two very renowned experts here to share their, their insights, and I'm sure they're going to do little presentations, and I hope there'll be one or two chances for questions at the end. But um, first of all, I'll, I'd like to, um, maybe you come up one by one and do your presentations, or, yeah, you go up there and that'll be fine, because then you'll be able to take some questions. So the, we have Siobhan Cleary, who's Head of Research and Public Policy at the World Federation of Exchanges, and has a long history of being closely involved with African exchanges in helping the 
both from Johannesburg Stock Exchange and working, as, as we know, with lots of the other African exchanges on helping people develop strategy and understand and critically putting liquidity right at the heart of how that should go forward. And then Quinton Goddard, who's principal financial services market infrastructure, uh, Oliver Wyman, another great expert, well known to you, I think. Um, so, yeah, two great presentations. If you'll come up and then do your presentations and then we'll have some questions. Thank you.